So my question, again, that I presented was, staying within the transformations that we know, stretch and compress horizontally, stretch and compress vertically, reflect over the x-axis, reflect over the y-axis, shift left and right, and shift up and down. Can we transform any of these functions to the other one? Well, the obvious choice is you can only transform sine into cosine, right? And you can only transform cosine into sine. And that works for uh, cosecant to secant, secant to cosecant, tangent to cotangent, cotangent to tangent. Those are what we call co-functions of one another. They're not the same, but their graphs look very similar to one another, right? So when I'm trying to remember like which one is related to which, uh, which other one, like I just think about their graphs and I say, oh yeah, these are co-functions of one another. These are co-functions of one another. Now, let's look at the transformations. So this is the sine of x function. Right? Uh, let's just do it sine of theta. So sine of theta. Now, what do I need to do to go from sine of theta, so therefore it is equal to cosine of theta? Right? Because this is cosine of theta. So you could think about that. You could say, well, what if I just shifted this left pi off? Doesn't that work? Right? So I could say cosine of theta. Yes, this is the cosine of theta, but that's also the same thing as sine of theta plus pi halves. Yes? Wouldn't you guys agree? Yeah. So therefore, does that work too if I was to take my cosine function and shift it to the left? Would that give me my sine function? No, that doesn't work. So crap. Right? Don't you guys see? Like, that doesn't work. Or plus, if you take this function and shift it to the left pi halves, you don't get the sine function, right? So this doesn't work. Hmm. All right. So since since um, sine and cosine are related to cosecant and secant, those those are going to be the same. So maybe we can get some advice from tangent. So let's go and look at cotangent and tangent. So to go from tangent to cotangent, obviously this has one period, that has two periods. You guys can see, now again, this has an intercept at pi halves, if you guys forgot. This one has negative pi halves. So, well actually, what did I say? This one didn't work, right? This was sine of theta, was it? Plus pi halves, okay. So that didn't work though, right? Well, it worked for cosine to sine, but it didn't work from, or I'm sorry, it worked from sine to cosine, but it didn't work the other way going back, right? So let's go and look over here. You guys realize that if I took tangent and I shifted this to pi halves, it still wouldn't be cotangent though, right? Or if I shifted it to the left, it still wouldn't be cotangent. So therefore, I have to reflect it, right? It has to be reflected. And the easiest thing to do is you could reflect it about the, you know, if we reflect about the y-axis on that reflection. And actually, the y-axis is going to be important when we look at this graph. Now again, there's infinite many answers here um, for this. OK, have a seat. I'll give it to you in a second. So, um, so let's go ahead and reflect it about the y-axis. So if I was to reflect this about the y-axis, that graph would look like that. Now, could I shift it to the left or to the right to get tangent? Right? Yeah. So then which one is it? Which one is it? So then we have, now actually we've got to know. We know there has to be a reflection. And that's what we got wrong in sine and cosine. We didn't do a reflection. We just did a shift, right? Mm -hmm. So now we know there has to be a reflection. So let's go back up to sine and let's apply the reflection. Let's reflect this about the y-axis here. Right? So now I reflected sine. To go from sine to cosine, where do I have to shift it? Right. You have to shift it to the right. Correct? You can't shift it to the left. Because here's pi halves. Um, if you, the tangent function, I'll show you guys on Desmos because this graph then. But you can't shift it to the left. It actually, there's not a value there from the left. Like this graph 
here's pi halves, here's pi, here's 3 pi halves, and then here's 2 pi. So when you reflect it, like if you shifted this to the left, that would take you to pi. Do you guys see how there's not a point like of pi up there? When I, when I show you guys on Desmos, it'll be much easier. But basically, there's only one way you can shift it, which is to the right. So when we're writing this, co when we're writing this for us to get cosine, we have to reflect it about the y-axis here. So that's going to be a negative. And then we have to shift it to the right. So I'm going to write it like this. Now you guys might say, but Mr. Willen, that's to the left. No, that's actually to the right. Because in reality, this is really the same thing as negative pi minus pi halves. right? So what I did is I just distributed it in my head. Now actually, we don't even write it like that. You guys aren't even going to see it written like that. The way that it's actually the, typically we write this. And again, this is only one solution. This is our, there are actually multiple ways you could convert from one function to the other. There's infinite many answers. But we're just going to use the simplified answer. And I'll, I'll show you, I'll talk to you guys about when we look at decimals, you guys will see. But we're actually not even going to write it like this. What we're going to do is we're going to replace, um, we're, instead of writing negative theta plus pi halves, the standard form that you will be used to seeing is going to look like this. So we just flip them around. All right? And then if you guys look at this, which I'll show you guys on the calculator, this works for all of them. And these are called our co-function identities. Basically, these are just the transformations that we can apply to all the functions to go from one function to the next. And that pi halves minus theta works on all of them. Isn't that cool? Wow, that was cool.